so to answer your question, Kathleen, two things that refill my energy cup. Actually, three. Number one, one of the reasons why I joined Salesforce Women's Network, San Francisco chapter as a co-president on my day five, is even within Salesforce, I'm learning new skills. And it's a good sandbox environment. And I don't know if you, some of you know what sandbox is. Sandbox is an environment before production where you can actually test your code, right? And that's an environment where I learn new skills. It's a safe environment to learn because even if I fail, I'm failing internally within a safe group and it's not my day job. So I'm learning people leadership skills. I'm leading a team of 12 volunteers. So I'm learning how to inspire them, how to motivate them. I'm learning the skills of how to communicate and grow a community of more than 1200 uh, members at this point and how to keep them engaged. So it's a really great skill set that I'm learning with the Women's Network. The second thing that I'm thinking about is product school. Product school reached out to me and it's a great way to improve my public speaking skills when I'm speaking in front of a really huge community of 1 million plus members and really share my knowledge, give back to the community and at the same time improve and build upon my public speaking skills. And the third thing, and this is something probably some of you can already start doing is a mentor students at your grad school or at your college reach out to reach out to the person who is uh, in charge of the careers at your college and ask them hey is there a way i can give back to the community they will definitely say that yes can you come and speak about this to you know to our um, students current students and do that and that's another way where you are building and honing your mentorship and coaching skills which will also be transferable skills in your day job when you're talking about that in the interview. So if you are a currently a, not a people manager, but want to move into a people leadership role, that's also a way you can say, I'm not a people manager, but I do mentor 10 students from my college who are uh, aspiring product managers. I speak to the product school community and help them learn the best practices. And that's a way, or even with the Women's Network, I'm leading a team of 12. And it is so important because I'm influencing without authority since they don't report into me. So I think you can do tons of work outside of your job that will help you to get that dream job that you are eyeing for. That's yeah, great. That. Rita. So I'll just add to that. I I love the I love the question. Thanks for asking it, Kathleen. And I would say in general, when I think about groups I've joined, uh, at least in the latter half of my career, I was probably more intentional and dare I say a little more manipulative in terms of like what I joined because I thought it was going to get me something for my career. The latter half of my career I've spent more on just enriching myself because I can, and it fills my cup. So it kind of lands in the latter half of your question here of filling my cup. And I would say the Women's Network, I, I'm the executive sponsor for the headquarters in San Francisco and love working with Turth and the team. And it's really, for me, what that does is, is allows me to meet a ton of people that I otherwise would never have met. And it, they, it brings me so much joy to be able to take a moment from my day job that gets so intense um, and think about the broader aspects of Salesforce and the culture. I joined during COVID. So having a sense of community and connection here has been challenging to achieve. And having that has, has helped provide that. It's just connecting on a human level with other people and feeling that connection that makes me feel like I'm part of something bigger than just myself. I would also highly recommend, and I think this is this advice was given to me a long time ago, and I didn't really put it into practice until about the last 10 years, and it's been very fruitful, but sort of creating your own personal advisory group. And, and I, it, 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 you know, we all, your companies have boards of directors, but and their own advisory groups, but having your own personal one where you can ask people who are either friends, prior colleagues, mentors, someone you admire, whatever it is, a friend's friend, a friend's parent, whatever, I've created this, my own sort of advisory group that allows me to brainstorm and vent and get ideas from and share and get support and get networking. Like it's so rich how many layers it's brought to me. And as a, as a side note, I've been able to bring together what I consider an amazing 
group of people that that have come to get to know each other as well. So think about that. And I think it's, again, it's one of those things that's an easy ask of people. And people I have found are always really excited to, to play that role. And they end up getting as much out of it as you do. I'm going to come off mute there. Thank you so much. I want to piggyback on a couple of things. So I love, I love the term sandbox environment, you know, having that place where you can try out new things, pursue your passions. This, you know, is my sandbox environment where I get to, you know, pretend like I have public speaking skills and actually practice those. <laughs> and I've gotten better over time. Great job, David. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And then, so the other thing that, and I wanted to, to draw additional attention, Trisha, to your comment, where initially you were joining employee resource groups or events to, to try to leverage them as tools to further your career. And then eventually you're like, no, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to join groups that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I think if you approach the latter strategy, because you're passionate about it, it will end up being a tool that you can then leverage to further your career. But if you pursue it from a utilitarian perspective where you're like, I just want to get something out of it, you know, you're, you're coming into it probably less authentic than you normally would yeah. be if you're passionate about it. And so something to keep in mind. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I'm sure you've all interviewed people when they have those volunteer points on their resume and you can tell in talking to them about it that they were checking a box, right? I think it it's so obvious. So do what you actually get that from. It'll show up when you speak about things, when you talk and you know, share examples of it. I think just being your authentic self in that is so much more effective and Absolutely. rewarding. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to kind of piggyback on, which I love, and I do, is, is the personal advisory group. So anybody can have a personal advisory group, but just, it's just folks that you bounce ideas off of. And, and if you wonder why, you know, MTOH, Military Travelers or Office Hours, has, has been implementing some changes and we've been doing things differently, it's because we have a personal advisory group for this. I put together a team of five folks, and, and two of the folks are on this call tonight. And they help me kind of imagine the realm of the possible and step outside of my brain and get some advice and leverage diversity of experience. And, and it doesn't matter what you do, you can have that too, right? And be able to um, use that to further your career. It's, it's a great, great tool. And you can have multiple personal advisory groups, you know, depending on what you're, what you're wanting to accomplish.